A new investigation into shark populations in the waters of Australia has discovered that there are two distinct species of great white shark, one to the east and one to the west of Base Strait. This was discovered by tagging large numbers of sharks in the coastal waters all around Australia, rather, to the investigators' surprise. They found that while sharks from the east side certainly travelled to the west side of the continent and vice versa, they always returned to their home areas to breed. The two types of shark were found to have a distinct genetic makeup indicating that interbreeding has not taken place. The implication of these research findings is that sharks may be more susceptible to changes in local marine environments than had previously been thought. Correct answer is I'd like you to think for a moment about your hands and all the things you can do with them, you can use them to write or drive. You can thread a needle, play the drums, build the walls and so on and so forth. They can be careful and precise. Think of someone doing eye surgery for example. But they can also generate huge forces and here you might think of the sports person throwing a discus or lifting a heavy weight. How's it possible for our hands to be so incredibly flexible? Well, it's all down to the extraordinary complexity of the bones, ligaments, nerves and the muscles that lie beneath the skin of our hands. There are for example nine muscles alone controlling just one thumb. Some of these are anchored to the bones within the hands while others link to the arms. Correct answer is Hello again. Well we're near the end of our unit on newspapers. I'm going to talk about our national paper USA Today. Some of you might recognize it as the topic of this week's reading assignment. USA Today is now more than 25 years old when it began. Few expected it would last this long. Well not only has it lasted. It has thrived. USA Today is the largest selling daily newspaper in America. It is also distributed in many countries around the world. But that's only part of the story. The real success of USA Today is the way it changed the newspaper industry. USA Today changed the way papers look. It changed the way reporters write. And it changed the way papers gather and deliver news. USA Today set out to be different newspapers at the time were in trouble. Fewer people were reading them the papers were full of bad news about crime and killing. They had long stories. They didn't have color photos. Correct answer is You can get a good qualification in journalism but what employers actually want is practical rather than theoretical knowledge. There's no substitute for creating real stories that have to be handed under strict deadlines. That is so right for your school magazine that maybe try your hand at editing. Once you've done that for a while start requesting internships in newspapers in the area. These are generally short term and unpaid but definitely worthwhile since instead of providing you with money they'll teach you the skills that every 21st century journalist has to have like laying out articles creating web pages taking good digital pictures and so on. Most reporters keep a copy of every story they've they've published secondary school onwards. They're called hotax and you need to get a job. 
Indeed a few impressive ones can be the deciding factor in whether you're appointed or not. To start creating a portfolio now that will show off your development. Correct answer is As an immigrant to North America, you need to ensure that employers and organizations such as colleges and universities properly recognize your international credentials. These may be trade certificates or also educational qualifications such as degrees or diplomas that you have completed or partially completed. It is common for hiring personnel to have little or no training in evaluating an academic background. Outside of North America but at the same time, employers see formal education as very important when hiring. Research has shown that sometimes immigrants start to put the lower salary and people who have completed their training and if you need to complete your training in North America apprenticeships leading to skilled trades are in high demand. Correct answer is Now let's consider two types of mistakes that can occur when the manager actually starts to set up a duplicate system to replicate successful process. Firstly, perhaps he forget that he was just trying to copy another process and start trying to improve it. Another mistake is trying to use the best parts of various different systems in the hope of creating the perfect combination of unfortunately attempts like these usually turn out to be misguided and lead to problems. Why? Well for various reasons perhaps weren't really any advantages after all because the information was inaccurate perhaps the settings weren't really comparable. More typically the advantages are real enough but there are also disadvantages that have been overlooked. For example, modification might compromise safety in some way. So what's the solution? Well I don't intend to suggest that it's easy to get things right the second time. It's not. But the underlying problem has more to do with attitudes than just actual difficulty of task and there are ways of getting it right. These involve adjusting attitudes being more realistic and cautious. Correct answer is I've been looking at ocean biodiversity that's the diversity of species that live in the world's oceans. Biologists still don't know how serious a threat to their survival is for each individual species. So a body called the Global Marine Species Assessment is now creating a list of endangered species on land so they consider things like the size of the population, how many members of one species are in a particular place and then they look at their distribution in geographical terms. Although this is quite difficult when you look at fish because they are so mobile and then they calculate the rate at which the decline of the species is happening. So far only 1,500 species have assessed but they want to increase this figure to 20,000 for each one. They assess they use the data they collect on that species to produce a map showing its distribution. So finally what can be done to retain the diversity of species in the world's oceans? Firstly. We need to set up more reserves in our oceans places where marine species are protected. We have some but not enough in addition to preserve species such as other back turtles. We need to create corridors for migration so they can get from one area to another safely. Correct answer is
It's easy to think that humans are the only species that have true friendships but animals make friends. To what do we know about these friendships? Well we thought for a long time the animals only had friends for biological reasons so their genes will continue. After all it's easier for animals to survive with the help of another animal. We thought the animals only helped each other to get help in return. But there's growing evidence that tells us this isn't true. Animals can also be generous and give up something important for a friend without expecting anything back from them just like humans. What about friendships between animals from different species like the bird that looked after the cat? You mean those friendships are very interesting. We actually know very little about them at the moment but we're starting to look at them more closely. Correct answer is We all know that journalists often make things sound worse than they were but they weren't the only ones. It seems that scientists sometimes do it too. In the past scientists have claimed that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch that's the area in the Pacific Ocean where plastic waste has collected together to create one kind of big garbage island anyway. They have claimed that this area of garbage is twice the size of the state of Texas or 20 times the size of England. Some scientists even said that there is more plastic in that ocean than plankton and that's the tiny animals and plants that fish eat. But a new report shows that while there is a very serious problem for the environment it's not as great as many scientists have said the research showed that the garbage covers an area that's much smaller than Texas. And while plastic can harm some sea life it actually feeds other tiny living creatures for this reason. The report concludes that we shouldn't try to remove the plastic but should focus on stopping more garbage from entering the ocean so it doesn't get worse in the future. Correct answer is It seems as though people are starting to suffer from global warming fatigue. In other words, they're tired of hearing about how our climate is changing for the worse and how we're destroying the planet with pollution. People do care but there's a lot of talk little action and certainly no solution yet. The stories people see in newspapers focus on the negative. They talk about how politicians are choosing the economy over the environment especially in these difficult economic times. And they write about people whose lives have been negatively affected by extreme climate change. Why should we spend our free time reading articles that make us feel depressed and probably quite hopeless global warming campaigners must turn the sad stories into happy ones. They should talk about the action that having a positive effect on climate change so that people become interested again and feel motivated to continue taking action. Correct answer is Dr. Tony Wagner believes there are seven skills that young people need to have in order for them to find and keep a good job in today's economy. But he thinks our schools are focusing too much on tests and academic performance and aren't doing enough to teach those skills. Let me give you an example. One of Wagner's seven skills is the ability to work in an international team. This is because little teamwork is carried out in one building anymore. 
When most global companies have a problem they create teams of people from all over the world to solve it. And these people meet online in virtual meeting rooms. To succeed in this kind of environment you need to be a good communicator and understand different cultures. Teams also need good leaders who lead by influencing others. But Wagner and the business people he interviewed say that young people today are unprepared for teamwork and leadership because of this. Wagner thinks that people involved in teaching and learning must rethink the way that they educate people in schools so that these young people have the skills they need to achieve a successful career in the 21st century. Correct answer is So where did this idea of evolution come from? Well, although there are always ideas you can go back to Aristotle and find elements of evolutionary thought and Aristotle. But really it's a 19th century idea. And in order to see how it developed let's go back to about 1790 reconstructed. So at the end of the century of the Enlightenment. At that point. If you were to ask a well-educated person living in a Western culture how old the world is they would say oh thousands of years. And if you were to ask them well where did all these species on the planet come from they would say they were all created just the way they look now and they've never changed. And if you ask them have there ever been any species that went extinct they would say no. Everything that was created is still alive and can be found somewhere on the planet. So when Alexander von Humboldt who was certainly a creature of the Enlightenment sets out to explore South America. He thinks that he might encounter some of those strange fossils that the French have been turning up in the Paris basin on top of Atenuas in Venezuela. So he really thought that there was a lost world. Of course Arthur Conan Oil later wrote a novel about that. But I mean these guys actually thought hey I go to Venezuela I go to the Congo I might meet a Brontosaurus. That was what they thought. Correct answer is Now, let's consider two types of mistakes that can occur when a manager actually starts to set up a duplicate system to replicate successful process. Firstly, perhaps he forgets that he was just trying to copy another process and starts trying to improve on it. Another mistake is trying to use the best parts of various different systems in the hope of creating the perfect combination. Unfortunately, attempts like these usually turn out to be misguided and lead to problems. Why? Well, for various reasons. Perhaps there weren't really any advantages that after all because the information was inaccurate. Perhaps the business settings weren't really comparable. More typically, the advantages are real enough, but there are also disadvantages that have been overlooked. For example, modification might compromise safety in some way. So what's the solution? Well, I don't intend to suggest that it's easy to get things right. The second time it's not. But the underlying problem has more to do with attitudes than an actual difficulty of tasks. And there are ways of getting it right. These involve adjusting attitudes, being more realistic and cautious. Really? Correct answer is I've been looking at ocean biodiversity. That's the diversity of species that live in the world's oceans. Biologists still don't know how serious a threat to their survival is for each individual species. So a body called the Global Marine Species Assessment is now creating a list of endangered species on land. 
so they consider things like the size of the population, how many members of one species are in a particular place. And then they look at their distribution in geographical terms, although this is quite difficult when you look at fish because they're so mobile. And then thirdly, they calculate the rate at which the decline of the species is happening. So far, only 1,500 species have assessed. But they want to increase this figure to 20,000 for each one they assess. They use the data they collect on that species to produce a map showing its distribution. So finally, what can be done to retain the diversity of species in the world's oceans? Firstly, we need to set up more reserves in our oceans, places where marine species are protected. We have some, but not enough. In addition to preserve species such as other backed turtles, we need to create corridors for migration so they can get from one area to another safely. Correct answer is It's easy to think that humans are the only species that have true friendship, but animals make friends too. What we know about these friendships? Well we thought for a long time, animals only have friends for biological reasons so their genes will continue. After all, it's easier for animals to survive with the help of another animal. We saw the animals only help each other to get help in return. But there is growing evidence that tells us this isn't true, animals can also be generous and give up something important for a friend without expecting anything back from them just like humans. I'm about friendships between animals from different species, like the bird looked after the count you mean. Those friendships are very interesting, we actually know very little about that moments but we're starting to look more closely. Correct answer is